Now I want to say at the outset of this video that Sargon of Khan has an absolutely fabulous beard. This is undeniable. For years I praised his beard. And all joking aside, he does have a very nice beard. And before I launch into the meat and potatoes of the video, I want to explain why I'm making a video at all that involves Sargon. I typically don't engage in response videos, and I don't want you to view this as a response video. But Sargon is actually a very, very interesting symbol and metric by my lights, and let me tell you why. Sargon is not mainstream. Sargon is not, for example, Fox News or the BBC or CNN. He is someone who straddles the mainstream and the edgy, if you will. And so you're not going to ever hear truly hot takes from him. His takes are typically very milquetoast, but at the same time, you're not going to hear the kinds of takes that you would hear in some morning show in Britain or the United States. No. So in a way, Sargon is a very, very good barometer of what people like to call the Overton window. What is permissible to be said within the context of YouTube? And specifically, not by YouTube rules or what YouTube thinks is okay, because YouTube demonetizes tons of things, we know this, but what Sargon himself as a very middle of the road, very non-edgy type would be willing to say, in that sense he's a very good judge of what is appropriate for the day and what's not in terms of the Overton window. And I think it's important because as things change, as our politics and culture changes, then a person like Sargon will at least be a reflection of that. He will offer things and say things that he otherwise might not have said. And case in point, something I'm going to be bringing up a little bit more in greater depth later on in the video, is the fact that in the video I'm critiquing by Sargon, he makes use of the word hypergamy. Now, many of you might not know, but I've had a few public discussions with Sargon, and one of them, about half a decade ago, give or take, he openly denied the existence of hypergamy. He claimed it was just confected. He claimed that it just didn't exist. He even went so far as to claim that maybe men are hypergamous too. No, in this video, this recent video that he's made about simping, which is the basis of my critique, he uses the word hypergamy. He describes women's desire for high status men, etc., etc. And that's what I really mean at the end of the day. He's a great barometer for the Overton window because the Overton window has shifted far enough that a word such as hypergamy is now licensed to be said in public, at least, in certain circles, and in far greater circles than, say, half a decade ago in the depths and bowels of the manosphere, which at the time was the only place where you'd really hear that word. Now a word like hypergamy is a bit of a household word, give or take. So... Again, nothing against Sargon personally, but as a symbol, he's a very interesting guy in this regard. But what is the issue I have with his analysis, if you will, of simpery? Well, it's not completely off, but most of the things he points out are pretty basic bitch, which further reinforces my point from before, that his takes are effectively mainstream online takes. Yes, we all know that simping isn't good. We all know that the guys who are simping rarely, if ever, get the girl. This is really basic stuff. What he doesn't do, critically, is examine the motivation behind the simping. I've made several videos on this very matter, obviously, and there are many elements to this. So in the recent video, I talked about desire for connection. Not even necessarily a girlfriend, but a connection. That's part of it. But one thing that Sargon does not address in this video, and I strongly urge you to check the video out, otherwise you won't have a clue of what I'm talking about necessarily, is that essentially some of these guys, maybe even many of them, have so few options that that is the best option they can get. It's something he never talks about. The idea that chuck a little bit of money at some ethod or some e-girl and you might get a little bit of attention in return. Because what's ultimately afoot here? At the end of the day, it's a dopaminergic game, right? Like any game. Every game in some sense. Any game with risk and reward is dopaminergic in some sense. So, unlike a slot machine, though, which is medium risk, high reward, in terms of the money you're wasting at the casino, this is low risk, low reward. You throw a 20, you throw a 30, you throw a 40 or a 50 at some ethot, and maybe she acknowledges you. 
Maybe she'll even call you boyfriend of the hour or what have you. And there's a little bit of a dopamine hit there. I could even imagine it to be addictive in some cases. And a lot of these guys have so few options that that is the best they can get, whatever that means, the best, in reference to women and access to women. And of course, when they have nothing else to spend their money on, apart from games and more or less taking care of themselves, they don't really view it necessarily as a waste of time or money in the same way we would, right? Now, setting aside guys who just throw thousands and thousands of dollars at these people. Maybe in these cases, you could argue that these men are actually deluding themselves into thinking they can get the girl. I think it's actually comparatively rare. I don't think most of these guys think they're going to get the girl, which is what Sargon's claim is, essentially, that he observes some former colleague of his do the same thing, giving him free rides to a female co-worker, and it never really resulted in anything. That this is somehow similar. Yes, these men do exist. I think they're the minority of simps. Most of the simps are looking for some kind of connection, however minimalistic that connection might be. Or they're looking to get that dopamine hit. The fact of the matter is you chuck a little bit of money there and you get instant gratification, however small that might be. For a lot of these guys, that's more than they would otherwise get in real life. Far, far more. So that's something that he really overlooks. He simply sees it as a bunch of guys using the wrong mating methodology to acquire these women. So that's probably the main issue with the video. Getting back to the question of hypergamy, though, which he does use and talk about in the video. Well, it's interesting because he talks about this. He talks about women wanting men of higher status and women not being willing to accept men of lesser means, etc., etc. He talks about all of that. And then he talks about in the context of e-thoughts or e-girls and how it's artificial and how it will never yield a relationship. Yet, in another breath, he talks about how you should better spend your time pursuing a real partner, someone who will love you. Now, here's the paradox that are predicated on that. What then is the relationship or marriage one is involved in predicated on? And to what degree does she, quote unquote, love you if it's simply predicated on status and your ability to provide? So yeah, I suppose you could say a woman might like you enough to countenance you assuming you're providing the goods, but it's a very curious omission he makes, I would say, in that it seems to me obvious that there is a continuity, it's a question of degree, that women don't stop being women in relationships and marriages, and they will carry over this behavior, albeit to a lesser degree. Help, maybe she finds the guy attractive. That doesn't change the fact of hypergamy, nor does it change... The fundamental question that every man needs to ask himself, is the woman in it because she likes you? She, quote unquote, loves you? Or, much more likely, are they in it because of what you, the man, can give them and what you can do for them? I said this many, many times. I'll say it again. Women don't love men. They love what men can do for them and what men can give them. And the test for this, a very simple test, if you happen to be in a relationship, is one day you can just go ask your partner, wife, girlfriend, whatever, what it is that she likes about you. And if it's some variant of the following answer, which usually amounts to, I love the way you make me feel, then you know she doesn't give a rat's buttocks about you as a person. And this is something I think most men need to come to terms with regardless. If you're going to have a relationship with a woman, you can rest assured she doesn't really care about your well-being. She cares about what you can do for her. Sargon points that out with respect to to e-thoughts, they don't care about they don't care about the money you can give them. But doesn't make that transition to relationships and marriage. Presumably because there are other elements there. Maybe there are emotions. In some cases there are. But it is never a case of she just likes you for who you are as a person. That just doesn't happen. That's a fantasy. A male fantasy, by the way. And I point this out, and Sargon's lack of pointing this out because, again, he is a great metric, a great symbol for what is permissible to be said in mainstream circles and what not. So it seems to be the case these days that you can talk about hypergamy. Even Jordan Peterson has talked about it, at least to some degree in the past. But you can only go so far. If you want to talk about how hollow the relationship between men and women actually is, or how hollow marriage is as an institution... You don't want to go that far, even though all the things he talked about in terms of simping largely still apply there. And it's a question simply of degree.
I wanted to point this out. I think it's important because we now have Sargon setting an interesting metric here for the rest of us to see where indeed the Overton window lies on this topic these days. And so it's okay to condemn simping. It's okay to condemn ethos. And it's okay to call them hypergamous if you want to suggest that women on the whole operate in accordance with some of these patterns and principles, you can't say that, at least not in the mainstream, but you can on this channel. Anyway, gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. As always, if I'm still live, I will check you out later. And more importantly, may the gods give more than they take because they sure as hell like to take. And I'll check you out later. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.